Today we're going to be learning about the structures of the respiratory system. As you can see here, I have drawn a line, and this is going to be our dividing point between our upper and our lower respiratory system. So first let's label the structures of our upper respiratory system. First we have the mouth and the nose. These are the two passageways which oxygen will enter the system. As oxygen travels through either our nose or our mouth, it ends up in our throat. The technical name for this area is the pharynx. This is a common structure between our digestive and our respiratory system as both oxygen and food will pass through our throat. But how do we stop ourselves from accidentally swallowing food down the wrong pipe and choking? Well, that's where this structure comes into play. This is our epiglottis. The epiglottis acts like a flap and it will come down and cover up our trachea to prevent food from going into the wrong pipe while we are eating. The last structure of our upper respiratory system is going to be this area here, which is called our larynx. And this is our voice box. It helps to produce sound so that we can talk. We're going to look at the structures of the lower respiratory system, first starting off with this area here, which is our trachea. Our trachea is also known as our windpipe, and it is wrapped in bands of hyaline cartilage, which help to provide support and structure. As air travels through our passageway down the trachea, next it reaches the bronchi. From the bronchi, which go into each lung, we then have further branches called our bronchioles, which are smaller At the end of each bronchiole, we have tiny little grape-like structures that are our alveoli. Inside the alveoli is where O2 and CO2, oxygen and carbon dioxide, exchange takes place. The last structure of our lower respiratory system is this muscle here. This muscle is our diaphragm, and it will contract and relax in order to help us breathe. Before we look further into how the diaphragm contracts and relaxes to help us breathe, first let's look at some of the differences between our right and our left lung. Now remember, when we are looking at a patient or looking at a diagram, everything is reversed from what we normally expect. So this side is actually going to be our right side, while this side is going to be our left side. You may notice here that the right lung has one, two, three lobes, while the left lung only has two. The reason for this is because of this indention. This indention is called the cardiac notch, and it's here to hold our heart. Now that we're able to identify all of those structures, let's look at how inspiration and expiration works and how the diaphragm helps to contract and relax. We'll go further into this in a future lesson. Inspiration is the process of inhaling or bringing in oxygen, or O2. Expiration is the process of exhaling CO2, or carbon dioxide. When we inhale, oxygen travels into our system and it needs to go into our lungs, which need room to expand. In order for our lungs to expand, the diaphragm contracts and pulls down, creating more space. When we go to exhale or expire CO2, the diaphragm relaxes and pushes back up, forcing the air out of our lung. You can see that process being demonstrated with this simple model. When we push in on the bottom of this balloon, it acts like the diaphragm and contracts the lung on the inside. When we pull out, that lung inflates again.